Uh, I guess we should start. Oh my lord. Ah! Welcome! Uh, maybe I should uh, put the title of the class here. Welcome to Abstract Algebra. Um, so we, um, so press, uh, just to test things out, can you go ahead and type one in the chat if you, uh, hear me and if you, to demonstrate that you can type in the chat. Okay. Aita Suk Sloth Ryan Looney. El Wombo. Okay, Professor Melko is in the chat. Okay, okay. So, uh, Professor Melko is a great physical physical person. So, go check them out. Uh, El Wombo, short W. I need to scale the iPad thing. Uh, 
Let's see the iPad thing. I see it. I see it. Ooh. Pro streamer. There you go. That should be better. Okay. Um, let's see. Procyon, MFC. Okay. So, um, great. There's people can hear me and chat is interacting. Second task. If you're in the class, um, type abstract algebra. Let's see this. Let's see. If you're in the class, type abstract algebra. Mm hmm. All right. One, two, three, four. Come on. One more, one more. You can do it. You can do it. One more. There's supposed to be five of you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> five, wait, 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 wait. Mod 1991, confirm. Are you in the class? Or are you some troll on the internet? You could say both. Yes, I mean registered. Where does Mod live? Mars? Are you in, are you on Mars? Mod 1991. Is that why it takes eight minutes for the signal to reach? Great. Uh, you be you. Um, Mod 1991. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. Um, you, you know, keep checking the oxygen levels and make sure that the, during the daytime on Mars that you don't expose the scientific equipment too much to the sun. Make sure that the potatoes are, have enough water. But good luck out there, Mod 1991. We're rooting for you. Okay, awesome. So good. We're all here, the registered people in class. You are my priority when I teach. Um, and our topic is uh, abstract algebra. This is the class called 4613. And I'm your professor. My name is um, uh, Anand Patel. But, you know, um, you can click on the link below this thing to see more about me. I'm going to erase this so that people don't know who I am. Okay, I'm, I'm your professor for this course. Um, and um, all like official course announcements will be made on Canvas. So keep checking that. Um, I'll send out emails every now and then when we need to make adjustments to various things. But that's what, that's what we are and that's what we do. Now you have to remember that um, because of COVID, um, the class is 45 minutes long. It's very short. So short, short lecture. And so what I'll ask from you is, so um, the consequence of that, because we have to get through a certain amount of material in order for, for you, me to prepare you for the second semester of this class. So that means that the uh, reading at home is more essential than usual. But I'll try to make lectures as effective as possible, given the time constraint. Um, and the book information you'll find on the syllabus on Canvas, it's, a, it's an interesting book. I'm using it because that's what previous semesters used. And it has a lot of examples. That's the benefit of the book. Um, it's a little bit light on the more theoretical proof side of things. So I might, I might bulk up more on that in the lecture. Okay. So the first thing I have to do is tell you what the heck abstract algebra is and um, sort of the, the goal of the class. 
So, um, goals. So, first thing I have to tell you is, um, what is abstract algebra? So the very first thing I have to tell you, and usually when this, when you say this sentence, like two or three confused kids leave the classroom. So this is not college algebra. It's usually the football students, the football players in the back. This is not college algebra. You are confused. You will have a terrible time if you think that this class is college algebra. Okay. Yes, Professor Melko will probably leave at this point. All right. So that's the first way to describe what abstract algebra is. I guess that's what answer number one. You are in the wrong class. Okay. The answer number two, um, this answer is pretty good, but also pretty bad, as you'll see. Um, it's uh, the study of algebraic structures. Completely uh, useless answer. Um, let me put some more things in this useless answer. Um, commonly, very commonly occurring. In math. Okay, mostly in math. But also in physics. So also in physics, some of these things um, ha um, are very ubiquitous in physics too. Um, oh, thank you, Gath. Gath is a uh, awesome organic chemistry teacher here on Twitch. You should go check out uh, her stream. Um, it's really cool. Okay, so. That's what it is, study of algebraic structures. So let me give you examples of algebraic structures. It's like you know them when you see them. What's an algebraic su structure? Uh, uh, you know them when you see them. Like adding, multiplying. Um, negating, um, inverse, ing, inverting, inverting. Okay, so adding like like two plus four equals. Well, we know things like it also equals four plus two. You see. It's commutative. It, adding is like, you can swap them. Look at that, I'm studying this algebraic structure called adding. Yeah, like that. Adding two integers. Okay, uh, multiplying. You know, exactly what you think multiplying is. Like this matrix multiplied with that one, right? That's what you're thinking of multiplication? Oh, exactly. You see, what we do is we distill we sort of abstract the concept of multiplying in our favorite example, like numbers. You probably thought I was gonna multiply four times five. But you see, we had another place in our math curriculum where this concept called multiplying, a concept like multiplying showed up, but it was for things other than numbers. It was like matrices, suddenly. Okay, it equals dot 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 something, something. I'll let you do that as, a, as an exercise. All right, putting a minus sign in front of something. The zero, what is zero? One times anything is itself. Oh my God, all these algebraic rules. Foil, foil, what the heck is foil? What we do is we, we sort of witness these kinds of structures a lot in math. And one day what happened was someone decided to sit down and say, look, I'm going to abstract out all of these instances of these structures occurring. And I'm going to call that abstract algebra. I'm going to study what's generally true about all these things and circle all the 
conclusions I made and put them in a class. And that's what this class is about. Okay? All right. Okay, so answer number three. Answer number three is uh, possibly more interesting. Um, so answer number three is abstract algebra is more like a language. It's more like a language. Then it is kind of a subject on its own. Some people will be offended by this. Um, or it's more, it's used more like a language um, than a subject on its own. I will, I will be, uh, for, I'm, t I'm giving something for students who are confused by what, who are coming into ab algebra for the first time and, and not to some expert who like has spent their whole life doing abstract algebra. Um, though those are kind of, rare i would say um so the point of it is that it, we see certain commonly occurring structures in mathematics in very diverse fields and so what we did was we, we gave language and words to these structures and we learned some of the more most basic properties of these structures so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we see it again and what happens is we, we then get this language of groups, fields, rings. So we get, we, we, mathematicians have now words like groups, rings, fields. Words come up that, from this study. Homomorphisms. Isomorphism. Um, kernels. Uh, images, um, etc. I'm just going to put etc. We'll see. We'll see all these words eventually. Okay. And so it's more like a. It's more like um, if if math is a tree with its branches representing subjects, algebra is more like um, some kind of internal xylem of the tree, like the sap or something. Something that's more spread out throughout rather than in one branch alone. So it's one of those, those kinds of things. All right, another answer. Answer number four um, is historical. Where, oh, thank you, Shanzam Gaming. Shanzam Gaming is an awesome gamer who, who does gaming. Awesome. Welcome to my abstract algebra class. Okay, so the, the fourth answer is historical. How did the subject of abstract algebra arise? Okay, how did it arise? It, um, I think one of the most awesome parts of uh, the mathematical story was the one that involves solving polynomial equations. Okay, so everyone has to, um, I'm sure all of my students are in a place where they can talk verbally because that's gonna happen in this course on through Discord. It's gonna happen through Discord. We'll test it out soon here. But um, everybody has to sing along or whatever, like quadratic formula song that you learn in school or what? Uh, what is it? So, so, um, if you have a quadratic equation, then there was something you 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 put the b squared and the plus and the minus the negative b. I, you know what? I'll just write all of them. You know, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. And there was this formula. Fancy formula. And the formula is attributed to the ancient Babylonians. I mean, I'm just, I, my history is, most, is mostly garbage, so go Wikipedia it for the real truth or whatever. But it, this, this begins in ancient Babylon. 
which is um, approximately, what is it, 3 million years BC? I, I forget what it is. Okay, point is it's really long time ago. This formula for the roots of a quadratic equation. And notice that this formula only involves, the magic of this formula, it only involves plus, minus, square root, and uh, uh, division. That's a percent. That's a percent symbol, but I meant to write division. And um, that's it. Plus, minus, division, square root. Okay? Um, yeah, that's right. That's the book. All right, so... Awesome formula, quadratic formula. So that means that students in 2020 are not afraid of solving for x when, when x is wrapped in a second-degree polynomial. And then people asked, people asked, is there a cubic formula? For example, if you had some equation, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x minus 97. Solve for x. Is there just like a formula that you can just... And what happened was um, people didn't know how to write down this formula because actually algebra, college algebra, the one that like, the football players left the classroom, those, that, that college algebra, that wasn't around for like millions of years, I guess, until like 500 years ago, 600 years ago, I don't know. So then we actually got like X as a symbol and then even minus and plus systematically as notation and the, the numbers, we agreed on the Arabic, um, number notation thing and we got about like six five hundred years ago some um, Italians figured it out and it's enormous I, I, I can't even it won't fit and I'll, 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 I'll draw a cartoon I'll draw a cartoon of this formula Oh, it's got some cube roots, and then it's got like a uh, square root in there, <laughs> minus, and then there's like a plus and another one, and this is plus. It's not a very good to, uh, like jingle. It's got, it's more like a symphony. It's got many parts and movements and so on. Oh, it's, it's, it's enormous, and then it's like divided by some... Okay, but what it's got is it's got cube roots, it's got square roots, it's got plus, minus, divide, percent, <laughs> divide, um, times, I forgot times. All right, that's it. And it only involves the coefficients. So you're going to stick these four numbers. Now there's not just a, a, B, now there's an A, B, C, and a D. And you put it in this massive symphony, and out pop your uh, uh, solutions. So that was a triumph of the Italians, of like algebra, like you think of algebra. Okay? All right. Okay, after the cubic, people ask, like, wow, okay. Next, is there... A, uh, can you can we find can we find the degree four pollen uh, can we can we crack all degree four equations okay so one of those Italians that I mentioned before they had a really clever student okay so very very shortly afterwards shortly afterwards Um, the, one of their the Italians had a student, that student, I might be getting the order wrong, but one of them 
Uh, so again, around 500 years ago, maybe 400, I don't know, 500 years ago. Shortly after, uh, uh, they cracked it. I'm going to come back to this. I might one day come back to this part of the history because there's an, there's an interesting twist here that I'm not t telling you about. Oh, they cracked it. Oh my God. I'm not even going to try to write even the cartoon. Like, I'm not going to even try to write the cartoon of this formula. But, you know, it, it's a formula like this. Like, oh, you have some uh, plus 7x cubed minus 9. Okay. Okay, you got to find the roots of this. Uh, find all the solutions. Oh, okay. So it starts with x equals, obviously. Oh my God, I'll tell you what's in here with the dots. There's, there's a fourth root symbol. There's, there, there's like a cube root. It's sometimes nested in the fourth root and so on. It just, it's, it's, it's absurd. There's a square root, just your ordinary square root. Yeah, um, there's, there's plus, there's minus, there's division, uh, and there's times. And it only involves A, B, C, D, E. It's, it's enormous and this huge expressions with these only these four uh, these uh, types of operations it's there so you can go and plug it in and you'll get your answers okay awesome oh wow so then then what happened was after that then people asked can we crack the degree five equation it's the t it's a tale as old as time can you solve equations in math if you're getting your phd back in 1500s this is the kind of problem that you would sit down and try to do yeah this is the frontier at the time Okay, and so now what happened here was interesting. At this point, something interesting happened. Um, several hundred years went by. Years went by. And not just several hundred years, but like also like several hundred uh, insanely brilliant mathematicians. Um, and no one could find it. Uh, nobody could find this thing. Could crack it. No one could find the enormous, huge formula expected using only fifth root, fourth root. Yeah, using, so you could crack it using not just fifth root, using only, let me put the list, nth roots, nth root symbols. So nth root symbol has the name radical in the literature. You'll see the word radical for just 16th root is a con is a radical. It's a 16th root radical. Nth root symbols plus minus times divide. No one could find a formula. And uh, what happened was in the 1800s, roughly, then in the 1800s, um, the efforts of mainly two or three uh, mathematicians, one of them is very famous. Uh, they are famous for, more famous for reasons that are non-mathematical than they are for mathematical, I would say. Um, this one is famous because there's a prize named after them now. Um, Galois, Abel, and also named another person that's uh, sprinkled in here. Three, math three great mathematicians, okay? By the way, this one was like uh, 20 years old um, when they discovered the most important part of this puzzle. But thanks to the combined effort of all of these, um, shocking, shocking news came. Shocking news. They announced that there's a reason why people were not able to find this degree five holy grail 
cracking all degree five polynomial equations riddle. It spans millions of years, as you can see. It started three million years ago at the dinosaurs, and now fifth at 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 problem number five. Why was humanity stalled? And they actually proved a theorem. Now look at the, the, the there's, this is beautiful. I'm talking to those who have never seen this before. Those who have, it, the, the charm has rubbed off and I, I appeal to your honest, inner honesty to come back and relive this thrill. The theorem is insanely weird. State, the, the statement looks like it can't be a mathematical truth. Like math should not have the right to say such a thing. Or anyone, you know, it's like a arrogant statement. It's a very arrogant, arrogant theorem, supremely arrogant. What they said is that um, actually um, there is no formula. Now, this is a theorem. What that means is, what they were saying is, if an alien civilization were to come next week, now the fact that, and if their mathematics, the axioms underlying their mathematics agreed with ours, then um, they would agree if they had their Galois, Abel, Ruffini, whoever, whatever their names are, if they even have names, maybe they just have numbers for people, they would agree that there is no such formula. It's not that we tried and it was really hard, so empirically we have decided that this formula is not there, practically speaking. No, no, no. It's, it's that stating that there is one is a violation of logic. That Stating that there is such a formula is equivalent to saying something like five is less than five, which is not true. So, so shockingly, um, there's a mathematical truth which declares, just like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagoras' theorem, that has a proof underlying it. It's not just an empirical fact. Similarly, with that same level of rigor, we know for a certain that there is no such amazing combination of radicals plus minus divide and these coefficients sprinkle them in somehow. No matter how brilliant you are, you will, you, you, the most brilliant person in the world, you will never find a formula that solves quintic equations. Okay? And same for all degrees beyond five. So there is no formula also for all, all higher degree equations. Six, seven, etc. All right. Okay. So, um, remember, this is my answer to what is algebra. It's the historical account. So, if this doesn't appeal to you, the fact that someone can definitively say that all proposed formulas will be false, if that does not appeal to you, then uh, you're going to have a rough time appreciating some of the more um, abstract, difficult parts of this course. But if it does appeal to you, which it should, because look at the structure of this statement, if it does appeal to you, then I'm going to tell you all that you need to know at this point. In order to understand the proof, you will, in one way or another, have to face one somehow or another, you will have to face the concepts of groups, something called group theory. You'll have to become comfortable with some of the basic ideas in ring theory, basic, 
very it's just some of the most basic ideas and words and um sort of relationships that happen in the very beginning of these subjects and field theory now this is not the same kind of field theory as you see in physics the, the, the fields the theory of field extensions the theory of field extensions okay and that those three things form the sort of three large-scale chunks of this course of this semester with extra more emphasis on the group theory so the group theory will play will we will learn this way better go deeper into this and these two will be lighter in this semester and then next semester you will actually the, the point of next semester will be to sort of execute essentially a semester long proof of this magical beauty of the mathematics that goes behind the magical arrogant supremely arrogant theorem of Abel, Ruffini and Galois which is that there is no magic formula that solves um, Degree five and six formula, uh, five, six, seven polynomial equations, which only involves radicals plus minus times and divides. Those those buttons in the calculator are not going to help you to find the roots. Find the, the to, to um, you're going to have to use something much more advanced, like Chegg, Chegg.com or something. Okay, for those for those math problems. Okay. Okay. So here we go. We're going to test Discord now because I need to I need to know my class where they are mentally. So that's my that's my intro for now. I'll tell more stories as they arise. That's my intro for now. It'll do. It'll suffice. So now I'm going to sort of probe my class and ask them some questions to see where they are and to see where I need to start uh, this semester because the prereqs are 3613, but 3613 has a high variation in um, quality and um, thoroughness and content even. So what we're going to do now, class, all five of you, uh, I see that two new people have shown up. Thank you for showing up. So in the Discord, I want you to populate what's called the voice channel general the general voice channel so class we're going to do some testing here class populate the channel called general just go in it click it yeah i see two people are in there okay all right um and now what i'm going to do is give you instructions so here are the instructions by default when you go into the general channel, make sure you're muted. If you want to talk to me, you unmute Discord, and then you mute my stream. See this screen that I'm in? There's a little, like, mute button. Mute this so that we don't get a crazy echo phenomenon. And then you talk to me. Okay? Mute my stream. when you want to talk to me. Okay, that's, let's see if we can follow instructions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sort of answer a couple probing questions, just a little intrusive probe. And from based on the answers to these, I'll know how to set the pace and when to set the homework due, due dates, um, what level the exam should be, etc. Okay, so a little intrusive probe. Here we go. Um, I'm going to go into general now. All right, I'm in general, and now I'm going to ask the following question to my students. Look on the screen. What does F colon A to B mean? All right, someone in Discord. Um, that's okay, RDL, you can type. You can type. 
That's fine. It's a function that maps elements from A to B. Oh, wonderful. And who was this? Uh, I tau suk. Okay, so I, 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 I tau AI. AI. It's a function. What was that? What was your words? A, fu a function that maps elements in a set A to the set B. Yeah. Good. I'm going to keep, uh, it's an intrusive probe. I'm going to keep probing. All right. I'm going to just sort of dig around. That's correct. That's good. Uh, did you learn that in 3613? Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Next. Um, uh, what does it mean for F to be injective? Or one-to-one? -one? All inputs into the function has a unique output. Meaning, some, some would argue that that is the definition of a function. I see. Mm -hmm. But I know what you're saying. What are you saying visually? Yeah, RGO has it in the chat. No two elements get mapped to the same element. Sloth is right. RDL is right. That's right. Absolutely. No two elements get mapped to the same element. This doesn't happen. Good. So no two elements map to same element. Output. Perfect. And then RDL has the formulaic way of saying it. Brilliant. Good job. Okay, next question. Continue the probe quickly. Let's go. What does surjective mean? RDL is typing. Sloth is typing. That's right. For every, so for all B and B, there exists an A and A such that F of A equals B. Correct. Every, every output, every potential, every element in B is realized as an output of the function. That's right. Exactly right. And I'll let you draw the picture of that. Fantastic. And what does the last Okay, let me let me let me try the probe. It seems like I am getting a sense of the class. Um, what what's the last word I'm gonna ask for you to uh um tell me about? This is a meta probe, meta probe. What what's the last thing I'm gonna put in this? Yes, bijective, exactly. F is bijective or is a bijection. If um it is both injective and surjective. Brilliant. So this is the type of content in chapter zero, which you should read in the book. Read chapter zero for this week. Okay, next, next probe question. Let's, let's go. If A and B are sets, what does A cross B mean? Someone on Discord talk to me or whatever. RDL is typing. Awesome. Or maybe I should do do this thing at this point. Two people agree. So we've got a lot of activity from RDL, sloth, and 
Aitasuk. So, yes. Um, it is the set of ordered pairs. Ordered pairs. A comma B. Where A is an element of A. Okay. So that's that's right. It's the product set. Absolutely. Okay. So, so people in the class on Discord, so in the privacy of Discord, let me know if you have never seen the prod things like the product set or what a function means from one set to another. Just let me know whenever, um, uh, at any moment, okay? So I so that I know. Okay, third question, a little bit harder. Temperature is increasing. What does proof by induction mean? Sloth and RDL. Another student is also typing. Great. Okay, RDL has an interesting take. RDL says, um, if I can climb the first rung of a ladder, the first rung of a ladder, This is what they've said so far. I can climb the whole thing. Well, this uh, almost because that's clearly false, right? That's clearly false because what if someone gets tired really easily? They can climb the first run, but they can't climb the whole thing if it's going like to like uh, Empire State Building. Uh, Exactly. Add another note that um, in this bizarre world, if you also know that climbing one rung implies you will climb the next, then, then it's true that you'll climb the whole thing. If I can climb the first rung of a ladder, comma, and if climbing one rung, rung N, implies I climb rung n plus one then i can climb the whole damn ladder both pieces are needed uh to con to conclude that you can climb the whole ladder okay anybody in the class who's unfamiliar with this don't worry because in chapter zero induction is reviewed it's a review week the first week and so you'll have homework eventually when i assign it uh here in a second okay Last thing, um, three times two plus seven is congruent to negative two mod 15. Is this true? This is testing familiarity with modular arithmetic. This is probing modular arithmetic. Getting a bunch of yeses. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay, now, question, question, question. Um, just for, don't answer, uh, class, but how would you, how would you, how would you answer? But minus two doesn't exist. Mod 15, only 13 does. How would you answer this? Would you just agree straight up, or would you, or do you understand why um, the person is a little bit confused? Okay, um, we'll again we'll come back to this modular arithmetic many times in the course, and it, by the end of the semester you'll understand that this person is um, hung up on a on a notational issue. Okay, awesome. 
good sloth pay attention in the class and you'll understand when we talk about the concept of um, equivalence classes pay attention during that segment of the class which will come later this week um, okay so class is over it's 10 15 my five students I understand that you have you might have to physically go somewhere right after class you should just go when I go over it'll stay in the video the video will stay up forever uh, at least for two weeks on the channel and then after that we'll download it and keep it somewhere secret so don't worry about just getting up and leaving you should do that um, okay and the parts afterwards I'll try to keep minimum content great so the last thing the last thing I need to ask is uh, to the class is class do you prefer Saturday homework due Sunday exam there's weekly exams in the class I'm sure you all have read the syllabus they'll be on canvas okay Sunday exam um, so I've distributed the, the exam stress throughout the semester for smaller more um, focused exams it's better for you uh, trust me so Saturday homework due Sunday exam on the homework material on that week's material do you prefer this or both due on Sunday out of these two which do you uh, vote for on discord go ahead and tell me which one you have T tell me which one appeals to you more Okay, first. And I assume by Saturday, do you guys like midnight? You guys like it'll it'll um inter it'll interfere with uh, your um, all the parties you go to as math majors. But uh, hopefully you can set some time apart during COVID. Yeah, midnight all the way at the end. Good. So we'll do midnight Saturday. Sunday. Um, Sunday will be like a huge exam interval in which the, the uh, exam will be available. So I don't think there should be availability issues when I set that thing. It'll be like a six hour window. Like there's no way someone won't be able to take it during that time period. So I'm not worried about that. It'll be sometime during the middle of the day. Okay, good. So that's that's great. So I, I'll just remind, I'll just note to myself that this is what the chat, the class chose as the structure of the course. Okay, so I'll send an email out telling you how the homework and the um, exams work. Okay, class, that's enough for today. Thanks for coming. Please come. Please participate. It's way better when students participate on Discord like they did today. Do your homework together. Complete freedom to do your homework together. Write up your own solutions when I ask you to do written homework problems, which will be rare, but I have to. Um, go ahead and use our own, our very own channel called um, In-House Chegg. We've got a channel on Discord, Discord called In-House Chegg. Don't use real Chegg. Um, you will be kicked out of school. Use, uh, gr let's grow our own Chegg. Just use the power of our own students to bounce ideas, ask questions. Um, I'll, I'll help out in in-house Chegg. It's, uh, I'm only interested in learning here. So in-house Chegg. Go and use that. Previous classes love this. And, um, and it's, it's a very successful system I have of, of getting around Chegg and increasing class honesty. Okay. 
Golden Duke, Chegg is uh, none of your business. Don't don't go look it up, Golden Duke. Don't don't ask what Chegg is. Okay. All right. Go ahead and leave, everybody. Um, I will be uh, putting the stream on the ending screen, I guess, because after this, I teach my other class, Calc Two, which is a much bigger class um, population-wise. But abstract algebra students, sometime today. Look out for an email that establishes the weekly structure of the course. Uh, it'll be simple. It's a simply designed course. Um, I know some of you are taking it for honors. I will lay out the extra little bits you have to do for that. Um, and some of you are graduate students, so I'll lay out that extra um, fun stuff. It's fun. It's just more fun. Um, but look out for that email. So get out of here. Everybody get out of here. Now, maybe I'll read chat for like three minutes, then I'll go drink water. I'll uh, come back when the class restarts for Calculus 2. Let me read this degenerate chat because I know some of you are in here. I know you, okay? Ah, that web, that type of website. Yeah, exactly, Chegg. That's right. Shearshack is back. Um... Second rule of check. I mean, it's it's an open secret now. Um, great. Let's go see. Let's see. Don't let them procrastinate both until Sunday. Okay, Carrot Cat. Carrot Cat is a VIP. Oh my God. There's some there's some uh, old friends here. Um, I hope they don't stay. That would be terrible. Uh, are these Twitch lectures part of the official curriculum? Absolutely. This is the class I'm teaching this semester. Please respect the classroom dynamics while you're here. That's all I ask. Um, and remember that my students get priority when I'm talking. So um, that's the only thing that uh, you have to remember. Love group theory has many applications in chemistry. That's right, Suleiman M. Um, Google is correct, Adam, altogether. How am I doing? I'm doing fine. I'm a little bit stressed. First day of class and everything. And I have this back-to-back -back situation. So I don't know what I'm doing in the downtime. Um, good. All right. Please record to YouTube. I don't want to miss the lecture. Maybe I should start a YouTube channel just to dump all these VODs. Maybe. Um, okay, let's see. You're ready for Calc 2? But Carrot Cat, you already took Calc... You took Calc 3, Carrot Cat. I'm ready to be ignored in chat. Uh, Carrot Cat, you, you already took Calc 3. You, you should go... Why don't you go... Go to some other math class. Yeah, go to some other... Go, yeah, go... Go learn some new stuff. All right. Um, or Calc 4. I don't know if I... I mean, I know it's a joke, but... Uh, I don't know when I'll teach, like, the more advanced calculus or complex analysis. I'm sure I'll teach that one day here soon. I, I look... Complex analysis is a beautiful subject. I love it. And I wish I could teach it soon. But... I don't know what Calc 4 would mean. Maybe complex analysis? Real analysis? I don't know. Okay. Okay, Carrot Cat. Obviously, you're a VIP. It says it next to your name, so... Um, you don't like differential equations? Learn to like it. It's, it's a beautiful subject. Um, the very little I know of it, it's beautiful. It's useful, too. It's the language of lots of physics. Maybe, maybe all of it, in some sense. Yeah. Crit 20, drop. Crit 20, drop. I'm not sure what that means. Crit 20, drop. Who's, who's, whose emotes are these? Let's see. Uh, Shushak, my stream schedule is... This last class you just saw was 9.30 to 10.15. 
They're 45 minute lectures, so it's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be intense, like for me, like to stay on target. Uh, but it, they're they're so short because they're giving students way more time to get between classes so that they don't cough on each other as they pass each other. It's gonna be a complete disaster, folks. I'm just saying it, but but whatever. They're giving 15 minutes between classes so that students can take like large circular orbital paths to their next destination like like complete detours um so i have to i have to i i, I have to eat up 15 minutes every class that's a lot it's a lot of time um yeah traffic circles for everyone like not like honestly they have like flow charts like People are only allowed to walk this direction in this hallway, and then, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they should provide jetpacks. That's what I've been saying, right? Get some jetpacks in there. Should, should cure a lot of problems. Yep. I don't know what that question means, Shershak. 90% uh, marks based on internal activities. Is 90% like the whole for the students? Like everything is internal activity. We're oh yeah, we're not allowed to um, to um, dock us from a student's grade for participation reasons because. Well, it, it's actually only really applicable for the in-person classes because you're not supposed. You, you can't say you have to attend, um, obviously, given the situation. So, uh, in that sense, I don't know if that's what you're asking. Like, how much does participation count? Um, effectively, none here. But, dude, the class is gonna suck if people don't participate. So, I'm hopefully the five students uh, are already gone before I said that. Uh, Carrot Cat, no. No, no student. And if you're ever a student, just uh, don't ever... Don't ever uh, pay any money to the channel. Um, no money for current or future students. So never do that. Because you might become my student again later. And so... Disastrous. I'll get fired. The FBI will come after me. No, this is their fall semester, Tropical Geek. So this will be a 15-week course, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, so it's, we're in it for a, a long... It'll end in December sometime. It ends December 4th or something. So... Uh, it's, it's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to have to put some kind of taking a break screen here in a second how come they have test on weekend um i mean because uh i could i could have them have tests on mondays but i suspect they don't want that because it'll put too much stress on the sort of day of a, of a class and these students are, I think, more advanced than um, I anticipated. So um, I think they'll have their stuff together to be able to take an exam on a six hour interval, sometime during a six to seven hour interval on Sunday. Um, so it's just less stress to spread it out than it is to put it all in a work week. Um, so it, I, I'm, I'm actually doing that not to punish them, but to give them more time to prepare um, than just kind of cramming too much into a uh, work day, into the Monday, Wednesday, Monday. I'm doing it for the opposite reason that uh, I sense that you might be asking the question from. Um, it's like four, maybe five. Yeah, something like that. Four, I would say. 
probably. Shershak? I don't know. I haven't been a student in a long time. And my undergrad was um, a little bit different. So I, w I think four or four is the average. Five, four? I don't know. I, I think it's something like that. Um, four or five. Yes, I did, Shushak. I did do my undergrad in US. I did. But I, I did it faster than uh, average. And um, I did it with less credits per semester, too. It was... Um, yeah. Will this course be proof-based? Yes, this course will be heavy on proofs. Um, it's a... It's a math course. It's like an honest math major math curriculum course. So um, up the, at that point, it's like proofs are no, no big deal. Oh, great. Yeah. The, the, the finding your way through, uh, finding your, finding the proof itself is appealing to the audience that's assumed like figuring out looking at a proof and marveling at what makes it tick is part of the is now the second half of math that is charming and beautiful as well that we take for granted um in in my audience that i take for granted so that's gonna be uh, a relief from my usual calculus to plug and chug mode. Um, but there will be tons of examples too. Like, in fact, it'll be mostly examples. And then the proofs are just of the intermittent theorems that show up. And then you witness the theorems in tons of examples. And there will be third eye technology. Third eye technology will be used. Um, even in the abstract algebra class, uh, which is a new development. It's a work in progress that's thanks to the boring professor servant. So we will be using the third eye, uh, even in a group theory class. So that's in development. Yep. That's right. Now the third eye has different subjects. And different realms. Um, Shungai will will be used heavily when, like, for the math for the five students that are in my abstract algebra class, I think they require less Shungai support. But there might be times later when when things when we get into the thick of when it, things get sort of more challenging or newer where they will they will be needing some shungai infusement some uh, shungai support and so i will bust out the shungai when it's needed ah shishak redeem Shung shungai carrot cat is the teacher's pet by the way i should i should have these alerts in in front of my face so that i can see this let me pop this out real fast Put it over here so I can see it. Carrot Cat is today's teacher's pet, everybody. So congratulations to Carrot Cat. Um, and Shershak redeemed your Shungite. So here you go. You got three Shungite circles for you, Shershak. Let the effect... I hope you have a good day with that. I hope that gives you good vibes for the rest of the day. All right. Yeah, Carrot Cat is teacher's pet. And they're not even a student of mine in this class or the next class. So that's great. Hey, Carrot Cat. Um, yeah, okay, Carrot Cat, whatever. Just show up if you want, but okay. I guess no one else knew about the teacher's pet, but I guess your teacher's pet. But you know, in the Calc 2 class, because they're like calculus students, you know, give someone else a, a chance at being teacher's pet. Um, I guess I have to restart stream in order for, for that to even work. I have to think about that. Oh, right. No one has 2K points yet. 
That's right. That's right. Um, I forget what 2K... Po oh, yeah, you're right. Teacher's pet is worth 2K? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, students will have to prove themselves before they can become teacher's pet. Absolutely. Shishak only has 1K points? That seems a little bit off to me, but maybe... Yeah, 26k was Carrot Cat. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Shishak seems a little bit off. But, but maybe they redeem, like, maybe they spam redeem, like, stupid things like Shungite all the time. Nah, that could be it. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Can you guys hear the, like, cool, I'm like a cool guy streamer. Can you hear that music in the background, by the way? Is the level okay? Or is it too loud? It's like I'm a cool streamer music. Is it too loud? Not too loud? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Just soft. Good. Yeah, it's supposed to be soft. It's supposed to help students fall asleep faster. Tropical Geek. It's intended to, like, help them along in their studies during class. Flower guy? Is that some reference? I, is that some reference I don't get? Probably. Ah. Okay. Well, I think what I should do is... Yes, that's right, Golden Duke. That's why it's important to sleep during class so that you can make the best, like you can memorize the lecture better. I, I know what you're saying. You're right, Golden Duke. Oh, Shershak, did I, I baited, I, I ba you got debated, Shershak. That's what you're saying. No, the next class is at 1130. Next class is at 11.30. Um, I hope. Let me double check that. Jeez. Scary. Hold on. Let me double check. Let me double check. Make sure I'm not one of those professors. You know, you know those professors? You know those professors. Chat, do you know what I'm talking about? Those professors that, you know, they don't show up. Uh, I, I want to make sure I'm not one of them. Oh, Z-axis? But it's Calc 2. So we won't be doing much 3D stuff at all. They're going to have to earn like the Y-axis or something. <laughs> the the Y-axis will be an achievement. Um, okay, it's at 11.30. Gave me a heart attack. I will show up for class, that means. Hello, squirrel. Um, we're just finishing up here, my first lecture of the day. And then the, it was an introductory lecture mostly, where I figured out what my class was all about. I'll send them an email later, establishing the rhythm of the course. But, um, uh, the next class will be at 1130, which is like an hour from now, basically. And it'll be Calculus 2. So, re the return of Calculus, if you want a uh, catchy title. Okay. And that'll be interesting and fun, hopefully. All right, Carrot Cat. Yeah. Carrot Cat, teacher's pet. See you later. Have fun. Go enjoy your life, and um, come try to try to come to appreciate differential equations. Once you come to that stage, you'll like the class, I think. Okay. Rubik's cube. Rubik's cube itself is 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 not the group, but like. The actions on the Rubik's Cube form a group 
Yeah, that would be a crazy, that would be crazy animation skills. Um, once we learn about group actions, which is later in the course, that would be cool. But kind of harder than um, some of the first examples uh, of group actions. I'm going to have to learn algebra all over again. Uh, yeah, algebra. Yes, yes. It's, um, uh, so 9.30 to 10.15 is a straightforward college algebra course. So Squirrel, you'll fit just right in. It'll be great. You'll, you'll, it'll refresh just your basic college algebra, like X plus Y equals Z. That's what we'll be doing. Totally. All right. Well, with that, I really should. Don't redirect to chicken stream. Oh, well, for, well. Um, well, Squirrel, I was I was slightly joking. Uh, the class is called Abstract Algebra, but um, uh, let me show you one of. Okay, so you weren't here, but um, let me show you what happened today in my introductory. So in my introductory part, um, uh, I addressed what is Abstract Algebra. So the first answer, A number one is that this is not college algebra. So that was kind of the joke. Um, it, it's called abstract algebra. It's called algebra, but um, it's what mathematicians call algebra nowadays. It's much more advanced than college algebra and um, is far more theoretical in nature. So, uh, but I think, I think you'll still have fun just hearing the words if 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 they appeal to you and even the ideas you can glean some of the main ideas pretty easily uh, even if you aren't proficient mathematically like a math major might be an advanced math major so it's not it's not what you think it is uh squirrel that's the um that's the, that's our little secret that's our little secret but we're not gonna i'm not gonna warn anyone else who comes into the stream uh they'll just think it's normal algebra and then they'll notice what we're talking about they'll scratch their heads and say like wow i didn't realize i was so bad at algebra <laughs> uh and we'll just leave it at that we won't we won't like confirm for them that this is a different use of the word it's at 9 30 my time so like an hour ago, it, the class started roughly an hour and 15 minutes ago, squirrel. Okay, so I really should, I think I should knock down stream. Like, wait, there are no penalties to like closing stream and then restarting, right? Like Twitch doesn't like say, Oh, you already streamed today. You can't stream again. Is is that that's right, right? I'm 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 an idiot, so I don't know these things. But oh, that's good good for you, non dairy neutrino. That's a good that's good habit. That's a great habit. Wait, no, no, no. We're not gonna do lattices. Lattices is a little bit not in the main first curriculum on uh, abstract algebra. I think almost universally, um, lattices are sort of not taught in the first exposure. The first topic is always group theory, and, and a thorough treatment of group theory is what we're going to deal with first. Yes, there is an abstract algebra too, where the, the ultimate goal there is to prove, I think, the fundamental theorems of Galois theory. So, 
how field extensions are kind of dual to inclusions of groups. That the fundamental Galois correspondence is the ultimate is one of the main achievements of the second semester. But they also do modules and over rings and basic things like that. Um, structure theory of modules over PIDs, if that made any sense. No, I don't. I don't teach type theory. Um, my mathematics doesn't require. Uh, that level of restructuring, let's put it that way. No, 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 I know type theory. No, no, no. Uh, no, 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 we don't, we don't need that uh, in my, I think most mathematicians don't need that. So, um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm open to it becoming important one day. Uh, but it's 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 a uh, it's 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 in the more in the future I think that it'll become more mainstream. Because the whole like making sure that your proofs are computer checkable, that when you start asking those kinds of questions then you run into this type theory nonsense. And uh, I think we're kind of still far away from serious mathematicians trying to make their proofs computer checkable, like as a habit. And so I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a while before type theory becomes mainstream. No, 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 don't raid, open set. I'm about to, I'm about to go, I, I'm heading out. Can I raid you? Open set. Can I raid you? Can I do a counter raid? I'll raid you and then you raid somewhere else. <laughs> Can I do it? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll raid. I'll, okay, everybody, you're going to open set real fast. Okay, everybody, you're going to go head on over to open set. And then open set's gonna send you somewhere else. No, no, no. I no. We're gonna go to open set first. Open set. Hang tight. Here's all these people. See you later, folks. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Go say hi to open set. Awesome math person. Um, also micro microscope person and musician. Uh, this person's highly talented. Okay, get, get, get going. <laughs>